Welcome to Minutes That Matter. In this video, we will learn how to install and configure WDS, Windows Deployment Service. Now, to do this lab, all you need is a single server. But in my scenario, I am using two servers, Server 01 and Server 04. Server 01 is my domain controller, which is installed with Active Directory Domain Services DHCP and DNS, which are required for our WDS. We also require more than 10 GB of disk space with NTFS file system. Now I'm going to use my server 04 as my WDS server, hence logging in as domain administrator. Now this member server is having DNS service already installed in it. We may not be using the DNS in the local server, but we need the disk space to keep our operating system image. So you can see in the disk management window, I have only C drive. So we can shrink the existing C drive. say 15 GB approximately. You can see I am creating a new simple volume that is in this case we call it a primary partition. Now we are going to use this particular partition to keep our operating system image. Now we can go to file explorer and see that there is a new drive called E drive with approximately 15 GB of disk space and D drive is having the operating system that is Windows Server 2016 in it by default. Now let's go ahead and install WDS. Now before we do that, we can also check one more parameter. That is, we would like to make this computer use DNS from the domain controller that is 192.168.10.1 in our case. Now let's proceed. With the installation of WDS server. So to do that, we can start by going to add roles and features on server 04. Remember, you can also do this lab by installing WDS on domain controller itself, which is not recommended by the way. Now in roles and features, let's select Windows deployment service, add features, click next, next again. Now under WDS role, you can see we'll have deployment server and transport server which are required. So we'll click next and install. Okay, we are done with the installation. Let's go ahead and configure WDS. We can go to tools in the server manager and then click on Windows deployment service. Now you can see the WDS window has appeared. Within this, we can notice that there is servers title under which we got our server that is server 04. Now you can see the exclamation mark represents it's not configured. So let's configure it. But notice before you begin, you need to make sure that you have Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP, DNS, also NTFS drive. Okay, let's proceed with the installation by selecting Integrate with Active Directory. Now, notice we got our default path C remote install. Now, yes, we have already planned to keep our operating system images in E drive. So we'll rename and give E drive instead of C drive, which is a recommended option. Now, PXE server initial settings, we need to make sure we choose the right options. That is respond to all client computers, 
known as well as unknown okay we are done with the installation notice add image to the server option has appeared which is the next wizard which if we want we can open it separately even after cancelling this wizard that is we can go to install images and boot images wherein we can start by going through install image notice we got the same wizard which is image group now we can give an image group depending upon the type of operating system images we are about to load so let's say i'm going to go with server operating system images so i have called my image group name as image group as server group and now we want to proceed with the install.vim file which is used as our install image by the way now because i have selected install.vim file which is having four operating system choices standard with core data center with core standard with graphical and data center with graphical user interface now for this lab i am choosing the last option that is windows server 2016 data center with graphical user interface so there it is click next click next again by the way you can notice that the image is going to be stored in our e drive and it is loaded from the dvd drive sources folder okay so we are done with this task now we need to also make sure that we upload the boot images for the operating system so let's go for add a new boot image we'll go to the same location that is dvd drive and we'll select sources within that boot.vim now let's click next and by the way the image name shows microsoft windows setup now it's not telling whether it is a client or a server or anything right so let's give a quick easy reference to this name let's add 2016 to it now that gives us a reference that this is a setup file for 2016 server or boot image for 2016 server okay we had done let's click finish now notice the play symbol on the server 04 represents that the services have already started if you see a stop symbol then you make sure you start the service by right clicking on the server and notice in the pxe response we have to make sure it responds to all known and unknown clients now adds we need not make any changes the computer will be given a name coming to boot now this is interesting we can choose to boot by selecting press f12 to proceed with the boot settings or else we can skip it for now we need not make any changes for pxe response but we can make a little bit of changes in terms of multicast ip address that is we would like to choose our own local dhcp server to assign ip addresses instead of the wds server now assigning multicast range will increase the speed of deployment tftp uses udp for a faster deployment of huge amount of data over the network now by the way we can also explore pending devices we can go for adding new packages for our drivers for now let's not go to the drivers options let's try creating a new virtual machine which is going to act as our wds client so for that you can see i am choosing a new virtual machine from file 
and all I have to do is the same steps what we use for creating a new virtual machine for Windows Server 2016. Let's call this virtual machine as a WDS client for our reference. Okay, so we'll click next. So you can see that I'm using the common settings for creating a virtual machine, except that at the end of this wizard, I'm not going to choose a DVD drive to install the operating system. Instead, I'm going to keep this setting default. That means I'm not going to choose use ISO image file for installation. Hence, the operating system has to load from the network only. There is no other bootable source. So let's power on the Windows Deployment Services Client. Now notice, as soon as it is powered on, it's going to ask us to deploy the operating system or load the boot files from the network. Now if I don't press F12, the boot will fail, hence I'll get the error message operating system not found. Now let's reinstall or let's retry this option by simply giving Ctrl Alt Dell and next time let's be ready with F12. So remember give Ctrl Alt Dell as soon as you do click on the screen and select F12 to load the bootable files. Now I'm clicking F12 Now you can see that the bootable files are being loaded from the computer 10.5 that is our server 0.4. You can see this setup is loaded from the WDS services. Now when I want to proceed with the installation, I need to be authenticated by Active Directory so that I can be authorized to install the operating system on this client computer. Okay. So this is our WDS client and we have selected the default operating system which is listed there and we can proceed with the installation. Now I need not show you the entire installation because from here it is all clear to you. We can install operating system remotely using WDS server. So if we want to check a couple of things like whether our DHCP server has assigned the exact same IP address or not, we can go for the domain controller in which our DHCP services are installed. We can expand server 01, expand IPv4, expand superscope which we previously created and then you can see in address leases we got 10.13 which is assigned just now for our WDS client. I hope in this video you have learned how to install WDS, how to create, how to add boot and install images and deploy operating system remotely. Thank you for watching.